night, good night. Have a one time tonight. God is good and God is good all the time. My name is Irma Jasper Divine. I'm also an unsolved missing divine. And I'm here to give you a shout news on tonight. And first I'm going to start with, um, that was a scam with rental uh, assistance on um, program, you know, section A. Uh, Jefferson Paris investigating attempt to scam emergency rental uh, assistance program. So now, you know, they, they scam with this rental, um, you know, section A. And it's going to be hard for everyone else, to, real victim, to um to be uh, applied for um, rental assist assistance. You know, so sometimes when other people do do wrong, it sometimes it make it hard for the next person. You know, so allegedly, uh, the scam fake water, they fake water bill, fake a lease agree agreement, they fake eviction uh, eviction notice, um, uh, and they all will submit it to the uh, to the parents. Now, uh, now they will be investigating half a dozen uh, applications to the um, Paris Emergency Rental Assistance Program for uh, fraud. And I see what happened that, you know, whoever they had on their application, they called their landlord. Their landlord said they don't, they don't have no one at their name at the apartments. So that's how they start looking into all the rest of the applications so that most of a dozen of them were scammed. Now they claim to be all uh, need needed a finance so Support, excuse me. Whoever it was, fake application material and document. You know, so they're going to be looking in, in, into that. You know, and they're going to be hard for anyone else. Even the landlords, they're backing out. Don't even want to deal with the program no more. You know, so um, Nicole um, Fountain, um, the director of Paris uh, Department of Community Development, which is uh, a minister of the um, program confirmed that the investigation um, by Jefferson Paris officer will take place. You know, um, they was calling what they had on, they was calling what, what was on the application and it was uh, a different story. So that's how they started notice, you know, and they started looking through the application, you know, calling the landlord then. They didn't have no name of that person at their apartment. Um, just calling lists that what they had on the application, and it was a different story than the application. You know, so the application included fake eviction notice, two that had fake water bills, and they had a fake lease agreement where they called the landlord. And they never heard of that person at their apartments. You know, so Jefferson Perry is now um, handing. The program entirely of in the house you know so they will only provide payment directly to the landlord you know so uh you remember they used to give they used to give them the uh certificate of how how much the uh how much it was to give to the land they're not gonna do that no more they're gonna only provide payments directly to the landlord you know, so now the numbers of landlords refusing to participate in the program. So since they had this scam, a lot of landlords don't want to deal with the program no more. You know, so uh, because they don't know if the person really, you know, uh, uh, need an assistance when it comes to them. You know, so uh, they don't want to be caught up in that. So a lot of landlords is pulling back. You know, now... To qualify for assistance, um, tenants must submit a stack of paperwork document. You know, that's what I'm saying. They make it hard for, for the real people that really need the uh, the services, you know. So their income, level, struggle, um, paying, rent, duty. I mean, they're going to have to come up with all kinds of stuff now. You know, they're not going to be playing now, you know, because when one person messes up, they just make it hard for everyone else. Incredible, dangerous housing crisis. You know, so it's crisis and chaos right right now. And they're going to come up with all kind of stuff to make sure this don't happen no more. You know, so it just it just make it hard for the next person that really needs the service. You know, since, since this scam came in place, this will be hard for real victims who desperately need assistance. Will have to show everything to get in that program. You know, a real victim 
you know, real victim on um, how be real on um, and get real or get a victim for real. And it still would be hard for them to try to get in because you had fake people pretending like there was uh, a victim, you know, you know to, to get in the program and they got in the program. You know, so you're going to have pregnant um, people going to need assistance and it's still probably going to be hard for them. You know, you're going to have people that going to be led all trying to get a program. So these is real, real victims right here that I'm naming that it will be hard for them to get in because of what just happened. You know, to do to this scam, landlords are backing up. You know, only payment goes to the landlord if that person able to get on the program. It's going to be so much document to, you know, you will have to come up with to, uh, to get in this program now. You know, to make sure you call, um, only payment, I request that only payment goes to the landlord, whoever is qualified for this program. And two, make sure you call, call a background check. You know, and that, that way, just like you call that landlord and they find out that the person was that's how we got to start doing. You got to call, you got to start calling the landlord. We got to start calling all these background checks, you know, so you can verify this story, you know, and make sure you get the, uh, yeah, I, I just said that. Make sure to get the last apartment um, they live in, you know, so, uh, so that way you'll talk directly to the person that's at the apartments, you know, even though you might say that might not even be real, you know, so we got to come up some kind of way to find out if this person legit or not or, or trying to get into this program, you know, and call everyone that they have on that application. We got to start calling references. We have to start calling that last landlord. We're going to have to, we're going to have to, you know, you got sometimes you might have to call their mom. You know, so you might have to do everything you can, you know, you know, because this program is for low income, you know, not for someone to pretend like they're being evicted um, to get on a program because you have real victims that um, really need this program. So we really need this program to continue on going on because we have real victims out there being um, evicted, real um victim that's that pregnant that needs somewhere to stay real victim that got laid off and will need someone need somewhere somewhere to stay so we need the program for a real victim but it gonna it gonna pay is you know it's gonna take a whole lot of paperwork and a whole lot of calling to make sure these person are a real victim uh for this program you know so uh that's on the uh the scam um rental assistance um so back to school safety tip update you know safety tips across the nation you know teachers and kids you know so all teachers make sure you all are vaccinated um before um enter back to school you know to be safe for the kids you know uh to uh face masks everyone Three, make sure sanitizers, sanitizer is um, in all the classroom and in the cafeteria. Uh, four, make sure all kids' desks are six feet apart and in the, ca in the cafeteria also. Five, make sure all kids wash their hands on the regular. You know, kids like to be touching all in their face and stuff, you know, so make sure they're constantly washing their hands every two or three hours. You know, just on the safe tips. You know, for going back to school across the nation. You know, so we talk about um, we talk about the scam. We talk about the scam for the uh rental assistance um program. We don't want it to leave because they do have real victim out there that really need this program. You know, you have real uh victims that being uh evicted, uh being laid off. You know, you got pregnant um, women so don't have nowhere to go. So we need this program for a real victim, you know, but it's going to be kind of hard. It's going to be many um, um, paperwork and documents to, um, to fill out. You have to bring in, you know, so it's going to be a whole lot of trouble to get in this program since they had this scam. 
you know they're gonna be calling everything that's on your application so i advise anyone do not scam you know be truthful on your application because they will be calling everything that's on your application oh uh, so you don't want to be getting in trouble because we, we have real victims out here that being a victim that's pregnant or have nowhere to go being laid off to have nowhere to go don't know what to do so we need this um program for this uh, low income or uh, uh, you know for on um, real victims they're gonna need somewhere to stay you know but it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard for them to get in because of this scam you know so uh we also talk about back to school safety you know update you know all teachers uh be make sure you're vaccinated before you enter on um, the school but you know to be safe for the uh, kids everyone with a face mask you know make sure sanitizers in the, all, all the classroom in the cafeteria make sure all the kids desks are six feet apart and in the, uh, make sure they're six feet apart in the cafeteria also and make sure all kids wash their hands you know because kids like to put their their um, hands in their feet and we also talk about the cell or uh, cell phone policy that the school uh, have now they're trying to cancel the cell phone in the school you know but i had requests that all across the nation all the school across the nation that these kids um i request for them to have their phone in the um in in the school because look look what we just happened you know we had we had a, a, a shooter came through the school and killed 19 kids and two teachers. Luckily, they had a child um, was able to call 911. You know, so all classrooms do not have a phone in all those classrooms. You know, so the kids going to need their cell phone to call the police or either have to call their mama if they're being uh, sexual assault. You know, so they need their cell phone for emergency calls. You know, so uh, but make sure in the classroom while they're doing their classwork that their phone has to be turned down or have to be turned off. You know, but they need their cell phone. You know, when they're going to the restroom. You know, if they're going to the uh, if they're going to the um break room. You know, they're gonna need their phone. Cause look, look what happened. Somebody came through the school with with a rifle, walking all through the school. So them kids by themselves. And they see that happen again, you know, they will have their phone and be able to call 911 right on the spot. You know, so they crossing, going through the hallways, going to the bathroom. And, they, you know, especially when they're going outside, you know, on their break, they're going to need their cell phone. I pray that this never happen again. But in case anybody come through that school and them kids going to the bathroom by themselves or they're in the hallway just going to the principal for anything and somebody come to the school they will have to have their phone on them to call 911 right then and there you know so it's very important that these kids have their cell phone in the school you know it's very important you know so the kids gonna need their phone by emergency calls you know because we just had you know this uh, shooter came to the school and and um uh, and one of the boys, one of the um, kids, were able to call nine one one, you know. But all the classroom do not have a phone in the classroom, so we have a mercy like that, you know. These kids need to call nine one one, and if these kids is being beaten or whatever uh, the case, they're gonna need to call their mom. They need to call nine one one, and they need to call their mama also, you know. So trade your kids to call nine one one first. And, but they still need to call their mama too, you know. So they will need their phone for emergency. We had this crisis already in the school, you, you know. But just make sure while they're doing their classwork, the phone had to be turned down or it had to be off, you know. But when them kids going to the restroom, they're going to the cafeteria, they're going outside on their break, they need their phone in case someone walking through there with a gun. They need to call 911 immediately. You know, so uh, so I have a request that all the kids, all across the nation, that all kids have their cell phone. You know, I understand that's your new policy, but we have all kind of stuff coming through the school that happened. You know, that kids is being killed, teachers are being killed. You know, you, you know, you need a phone to call nine one one 
right on the spot. You know, so that's all the short news I have for you today. And I'll see y'all on the next video.